Father Paul. I'm here with Bishop George Sumner. He he just bought me breakfast. All right. And now we're Dang. doing a, an episode of Clergy and Cars Conversing. Just an opportunity for us to have a conversation and give a little glimpse into the things we yeah. talk about when right. we're driving around. So, yes. you've been in Texas for a while now, almost three years. Three years. And I gotta ask, yeah. is it barbecue or tacos these days? So I really, really like the tacos, and they are just always great fiestas however after three years I've liked them too much and I am on my low carb phase so it's it's I love the tacos but it's all brisket right now oh the man. brisket is the king of the high protein yeah well you know I'm a big fan of tacos I've always yeah. contested that most leftovers are either better in an omelet yeah. or in a, in a burrito uh, shell but I gotta say, I'm no. a big fan of brisket too. No, so. well, you're a young man still. You yeah. know, you don't have the, the, the girth issue. <laughs> well, we'll see. Now, yeah. we'll take a little more serious okay. turn. We gotta, you know, we gotta engage on ministry too. And I was actually pretty excited. You, you've been writing a consistent blog post for us in the mm -hmm. diocese of Dallas, right. pretty much from the get go, right? Yep. Uh, an opportunity to share with us things theological and of the church, uh, kind of on a weekly basis. And you just announced recently that you're going to be using that weekly blog post to uh, offer a catechism over the next two right. years. Yes. Can you tell us a little yes. bit more about that? Well, I um, I really appreciate uh, all the efforts to teach and uh, catechize and all the congregations I go to. And I wanted to make my own contribution, my own effort. Uh, I really think that catechizing, teaching the faith, is is um, is really in the most essential thing we do in an age when uh, we really need to remember the sort of the the skeleton, the bones, the basics of our faith. And um, so I'm going to try my own effort here. 100 weeks of catechism, and my idea is to build a kind of build a spiritual or mental church. And the idea is that uh, we inhabit the church, and uh, I'm kind of stealing this from uh, the great Anglican poet George Herbert, who wrote poems about different parts of the physical church, which were metaphors for parts of our faith, the floor, the door, the altar. And so my catechism is built around a church. Right. And right now I'm just beginning, so I'm in the narthex or or entryway uh, passage, uh, trying to, how do people get into the life of faith? And um, so anyway, a hundred weeks. So that pairs well with some of the uh, evangelism initiative stuff we're doing here in the Diocese mm -hmm. of Dallas. Then, yes. Too, kind of right. giving a, a core teaching to offer as people yep. come into church, maybe for the first time, yes. or maybe they've been away for a while, and this gives right. them a, a re-entrance yes. into right. a particular part of the church, yep. right? Because, yes. at least in my experience, I know I have a lot of members who grew up in another denomination, mm -hmm. right? and some of our teaching uh, is kind of, I mean, fundamentally yeah. different, and they, they take uh, kind right. of... Yes, they're they're encouraged by that, right? Right. So yep. I think everywhere I, I mean I go and confirm a, a lot, and everywhere I go, I try to emphasize that. In some ways, confirmation emphasizes the distinctiveness of our own tradition, but it's also a uh, a, a claiming and reaffirmation of baptism, which is shared by all Christians. So it's also a kind of ecumenical moment where we're we're claiming our baptismal life and we're baptized as followers of Jesus and not as Lutherans, Roman Catholic, Episcopalians. But you're right, lots of people, um, you know, I think where people have come from is important and it's really important that uh, we all uh, claim what's valuable about that and, and um, uh, what's good in our, in our, um, in our own uh, uh, journey as Christians, but also um, uh, learn something new right in our confirmation life now I've learned about kind of the history of catechism since you've been here you've had a couple folks visit the right. diocese yes. of Dallas and share right so some of that I mean while I, I kind of learned maybe parts of that in seminary but the, the history of the catechism seems right like an important aspect. yes and I, I was a little bit surprised to learn that you know writing 
uh, a catechism was pretty commonplace for clergy for, yes. for a period of time. Right. And so maybe what you're doing yeah. is offering us kind of a return right. to that practice yes. in a sense yeah. too and kind of modeling it mm -hmm. for us. We, we've used the, the catechism in the Book of Common Prayer as Correct. we teach confirmation right. you know, every year. It's, it's one of the tools that we yes. use, uh, a part of a reference of the Book of Common Prayer that we right. incorporate yes. into that preparation. Right. So. Yes. You know, there's a great um, uh, Antony Bloom, who's a uh, uh, Orthodox theologian and teacher about prayer and eventually a bishop. Um, uh, used to talk about being a beginner and his point was that Christians are always beginners because when it comes to the faith we're uh, we're supposed to have the hearts of uh, children uh, and we're always starting we're always trying it's not a thing that we we never Absolutely. somehow get to the mountaintop right so <laughs> so you know progress is understanding in a deeper way how much of a beginner I am and we all Pray the Lord's Prayer, which is one of the hearts of catechism every uh, day, which is a Jesus intentionally made it a beginner's prayer. So, um, so in some ways, catechism is never a thing we get beyond, uh, but it's always a thing we're remembering the, the the kind of the most important central things. We're remembering them and going deeper and so forth. So historically, catechism uh, focused on the creed. Uh, what we believe, the Ten Commandments, the distinctiveness of the Christian life, um, and the Lord's Prayer, the life of uh, the spiritual life. Uh, but we're always going deeper by going back to the beginning. Well, I appreciate you kind of giving us a little bit of a glimpse into what that series will look like. They can find it on uh, the e Episcopal Diocese of Dallas or right. EDOD. Right? Yes. Uh, EDOD.org. Right. Uh, would be where they would yep. locate that series as yes. it kind of unfolds before That's us right. on a weekly basis That's over right. the next yes. two years. Yeah. Can we can we shift gears a little sure. bit? Uh, I want to ask, I've been trying to ask all of the clergy that uh, are brave enough to get into the car Yeah, with yeah, me. right. One. Your driving has been great so oh, far. Well, you know what I mean? We are safe here. Camera, I want you to know. So we got to yeah, stay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We gotta drive my best. My mom's yeah, gonna watch Yeah, absolutely. This. So if my mom's gonna watch yeah. it, I gotta take care, right? Yep. Now, um, I gotta say, what what do you see as a kind of the preeminent social issue of our yes. time? You know, there's, yes. there's so many for us. Yes. And I think as a church, right. sometimes it's complicated for us. You know, we, we try to do uh, a lot of things, and right. And that's great. I think yep. it's good that we're engaged in a variety of things, but sometimes it's helpful to focus in on one issue, not to say that we're yeah. not gonna, gonna quit doing all the other things, it's just to say a focused intention maybe allows us to generate more progress in a particular issue. Yep. So what? so I'm a I'm an old geezer and I need <laughs> somebody to help me like work my iPhone and how do I, I don't know, you know. I'm a, I, I was surprised recently when I, you know, somebody was able to take a screenshot. So it's a pretty primitive level we're dealing with. But that being said, I think that one of the great issues of our time is the way in which technology uh, continues to mean that machines intervene between us as we try to relate to one another as humans. And that one of the great uh, issues of our time will be the effect of technology on human life. Um, I know that, you know, my wife's a psychotherapist and is interested in how these machines will actually change our brains, but I think they also affect our souls. I mean, we've all seen in the political realm how machines have made it easy to uh, distort and to um, uh, mm. present, you know, yeah. uh, uh, false or, or um, invasive pictures of reality. Uh, and the Christian faith is uh, a, you know, a relationship between each of us and us as a people with God um, face to face. And it's a relationship between uh, believers face to face and um, between uh, our brother and sister human beings face to face. So at some basic level, while we want to have some benefit of the technological revolution, we have, we, we're a kind of quiet, 
uh, counter reality to machines intervening in most every area of our life. And I think that's going to be a big thing yes. in, uh, in the uh, generation. So even as each of these things has a, an advantage, you know, with the Correct. internet or your right. iPhone or whatever it yes. might be, right. um, all the medical advances, yes. they also have a cost. And it's right. not just the, the dollar yeah. cost yes. of actually purchasing right. the device. There's the, the yes. there's a spiritual cost, Correct. of course. There's right. uh, kind of what else that yes. pulls our attention right. or, or what right. have you. I saw an interesting article uh, just this week how iPhone or the Apple is actually looking at how they can make the iPhone less addictive. Yes, correct. Uh, with, right, and it, and, the, and the way they were going to do it is a special app, which is ironic in and of itself. Sure. You know what I mean? Yes. The, 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 the anti-app app right. tells you... You've been on the, too long. ...tells you the... Um, Not yet. Stay, conundrum stay with us. The conundrum <laughs> we're in. But anyway, so and I let let let, you know, let let let's have full confession here. I listen to morning prayer every morning on my iPhone. That's oh, I tell you where are we going here. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. You see, I, you, yes, see you need turn off that iPhone and pray <laughs> out of your noggin, out of the book, <laughs> out of the better. book. Yeah, I keep the book at home. Okay, and All then right. the phone is for when I'm on the go. That's right. So I don't know. It, it, I yes. figure. It's, the book reminds me, whereas the phone, right. there's so many options. You get yes. on the phone and it's yes. like, oh, I could do anything, no, right? I mean, it's... Right. So, that, it is interesting for us to consider, and I think, I mean, even little practices where we agree to, to put the phones away for dinner or yes. whatever it might yes. be, or leave it, in right. the, leave it in the car while you're at the yep. restaurant or whatever form yes. that might take is a, is a good first step. You know, a great uh, an author for our time. If I can give a yeah, one of my favorite books um, plug, an author for our time, I believe, is a guy named Jacques Ellul, E L L U L, French Protestant theologian. After World War II, long before there were iPhones, who was already talking about the effect of the kind of machine model on human society, humans as, and the, and the drive toward having more and more of our lives technologically defined and what that would do to our sense of what a human being is. He wrote a great book called The, um, the Technological Society. So Jacques Ellul um, was a kind of uh, radical about um, the the you know holding on to the doctrine of the what's unique about the human person in an era that had not even imagined the things we now take for granted it is interesting because there's a, a couple of books from you know 30 40 years ago that mm -hmm. kind of saw anticipated saw yes, the, the right. challenges of our time coming yeah and now we're confronted with okay how do we actually yes. uh, respond to this right uh, so well, I really appreciate you. Thank you very coming much. And joining us okay. in the car, taking some time to, to right. offer some insight to us. All right. Anything else you want to offer before we close out? I'm going to pray. That would be the great. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks this day. And we give thanks that you uh, have made us in your image as uh, creatures who are. Um, who are limited and fallible and uh, finite, but are also uh, capable of knowing and worshiping you. And uh, we pray that you would um, enable us to see uh, this calling as unique and blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. We'll see you in church. Okay, bye.